institutes related to export promotion assistance. Whether or not anybody accepts it, to undertake the export business, one needs to have special knowledge and business acumen. Exporters need guidance and assistance at different stages of the export effort. For this purpose, the Government of India has set up several institutions whose main functions are to help the exporter in his work. In this lesson, we will learn the role of these institutions in export promotion. After studying this lesson, you should be able to understand functions of ITPO, Export Processing Zone, Export Promotion Council, various EPCs and Commodity Boards of India. For undertaking international marketing operations, an exporter needs special guidance and assistance in critical areas like packaging, market promotion and publicity, quality certification, risk coverage, market intelligence, finance and credit support, etc. It is only with the support and services rendered by specialized institutions, exporter is able to successfully convert his production into sales in the international market. Consequently, any country including India engaged in the task of export promotion has to establish specialized institutions for strengthening export marketing effort for the country as a whole. In view of the increasingly important and critical role of foreign trade in economic development, a separate Ministry of Commerce has been entrusted with the responsibility of promoting India's interest in international market. The Department of Commerce in the Ministry of Commerce has been made responsible for the external trade of India and all matters connected with the same. The main functions of the Ministry are the formulation of international commercial policy, negotiation of trade agreements, formulation of countries, export-import policy and their implementation. For ensuring a regular consultation, monitoring and review of India's foreign trade policies and operations, Government of India has set up a board of trade with representatives from commerce and other important ministries, trade and industry associations, and export service organizations. With a view to ensure regular and effective monitoring of India's foreign trade performance and related policies, Cabinet Committee on Export has also been set up. For speedier and quicker decision making, an empowered committee of secretaries has also been established to assist the Cabinet Committee on Exports. Grievance Cell has been set up to entertain and monitor disposal of grievances and suggestions received. It is a cell meant for speedy redressal of genuine grievances. Grievances Committee, headed by Director General of Foreign Trade and Head of Concerned Regional Licensing Authority, have been constituted in the respective licensing offices. DGFT is an important office of the Ministry of Commerce to help the formulation of India's export-import policy and implementation thereof. It has set up regional offices in almost all states and union territories of India. DGCI and S has been entrusted with the task of compilation and publication of data on India's foreign trade. It brings out various publications relating to foreign trade of India. Ministry of Textiles is another ministry of Government of India which is responsible for policy formulation, development, regulation and export promotion of textile sector including sericulture, jute and handicrafts, etc. It has a separate export promotion division, offices, advisory boards, development corporations, export promotion councils and commodity boards. The cell has been created under Ministry of Commerce. Its functions are to act as a nodal agency for interacting with state government or union territories on matters concerning export or import from state or union territories. The Directorate has the headquarter at New Delhi 
and extension centers located in almost any state and union territory. They provide export promotion services almost at the doorsteps of the small-scale industries and cottage unit. India Trade Promotion Organization ITPO, is synonymously with the country's trade promotion around the world all around the year. Indeed, at ITPO, the promotion of trade is an exacting mission translating into a search for new frontiers and new horizons in the world of commercial interactions both at macro and micro levels. The various functions of Indian Trade Promotion Organization include organized trade fairs and exhibitions, involve the state governments, assist in technological upgradation and product development, help in establishing overseas contacts, identify and nurture specific export products with long-range growth prospects, conduct in-house and need-based research on trade and export promotion, participate in overseas trade fairs and exhibitions, organize seminars, conferences and workshops, encourage and involve small and medium scale units in export promotion efforts. The Indian Institute of Foreign Trade IIFT is an autonomous organization set up in 1963 by the government of India to help professionalize the country's foreign trade management and increase exports by developing human resources, generating, analyzing and disseminating data and conducting research with the primary objective of actuality India's potential in technology trade and addressing some of the institutional complexities IIFT has set up the Center for International Trade in Technology with financial and technical support from the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research Government of India. The Center for WTO Studies was established with the objective to provide research and analytical support on a continuous basis to the Department of Commerce on identified issues pertaining to the World Trade Organization. The growing importance of small and medium enterprises in the economy as a whole and external trade in particular has prompted IIFT to establish a separate center for SME studies which can act as a catalyst to the internationalization of SME activities. The Indian Institute of Packaging was incorporated as a society under the Society's Registration Act 1860 on 14 May 1966. The Institute has its head office and principal laboratories at Mumbai and regional testing and development laboratories at Calcutta, New Delhi and Chennai. The Institute over the years has built up a very strong and capable expertise in various fields of packaging sciences and technologies and with the excellent infrastructural facilities available is geared to cater to the various needs of the package manufacturing and package user industries both with regard to domestic distribution and export market requirements. The Institute is closely linked with international organizations. It is recognized by the UNIDO, United Nations Industrial Development Organization, and the ITC, International Trading Center, for consultancy and training. The IIP is a member of the Asian Packaging Federation, APF, the Institute of Packaging Professionals, IOPP USA, the Institute of Packaging, IOP, UK, Technical Association of Pulp and Paper Industry, TAPI, USA, and the World Packaging Organization, WPO. The various functions of Indian Institute of Packaging include Organizing training programs pertaining to packaging and providing suggestions in regard to packaging. Testing of packaging materials and packages to ensure export quality. All dangerous goods packages need a UN certification mark. 
before they can be dispatched. IIP is the only authorized body in India to give this certification. The institute has an environment cell which guides exporters as to what type of material can be used or incorporated in the packaging of their products so as to reduce environmental threats. It undertakes research and development programs for creating and improving overall infrastructural facilities for achieving packaging improvement so as to prevent losses during transportation. It collects information on various packing and packaging strategies and disseminate them to the exporter for their benefits and so on. Export Processing Zones EPZs, can be summarized as a unit bearing clusters of specially designed zones of aggressive economic activity for the promotion of export. The main concept of export processing zones was conceived in the early 1970s to promote the growth of the sickening export business of India. Further, the meaning of export processing zones EPZs, can be broadly defined as an area enjoying special government of India support with respect to fiscal incentives, tax rebates and other exclusive benefits for the growth of export. Objectives of setting up EPZs include Encourage and generate the economic development Encourage foreign direct investments Channel the sources of foreign exchange within the system in a phased manner Foster the establishment and development of industrial enterprises within the said zones. Encourage and generate wider economic activities by encouraging foreign investments for the development of the zones. Channel the foreign exchange earnings for the further development of these zones and explore new areas for the development of Indian exports. Encourage establishment and development of Indian industries and business enterprises and facilitate with proper infrastructure generate employment opportunity. Upgrade labor and management skills. Acquire advanced technology for increased productivity. Ensure world class quality of products. The Export Promotion Councils are non-profit organizations registered under the Indian Companies Act or Societies Registration Act, as the case may be. They are supported by financial assistance from the Government of India. The main role of the EPCs is to project India's image abroad as a reliable supplier of high-quality goods and services. In particular, the EPCs encourage and monitor the observance of international standards and specifications by exporters. The EPCs keep abreast of the trends and opportunities in international markets for goods and services and assist their members in taking advantage of such opportunities in order to expand and diversify exports. The major functions of the EPCs are to provide commercially useful information and assistance to their members in developing and increasing their exports, to offer professional advice to their members in areas such as technology upgradation, quality and design improvement, standards and specifications, product development and innovation, etc. To organize visits of delegation of its members abroad to explore overseas market opportunities. To organize participation in trade fairs, exhibitions and buyer-seller meets in India and abroad. To promote interaction between the exporting community and the government both at the central and state levels to build a statistical base and provide data on the exports and imports of the country, exports and imports of their members, as well as other relevant international trade data. There is a long list of Export Promotion Council and Commodities Boards. A few of them are 
Agricultural and Processed Food Product Export Development Authority, Apparel Export Promotion Council, Chemical, Pharmaceuticals and Cosmetics Export Promotion Council, Carpet Export Promotion Council, and Cashew Export Promotion Council of India. Let us now check our progress by telling if the statements given on the screen are true or false. EPC stands for Export Processing Council. Right or wrong? Wrong. IIFT stands for International Institute of Foreign Trade. Right or wrong? Wrong. WTO stands for World Trade Organization. Right or wrong? Wrong. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. The basic objective of Export Promotion Councils is to promote and develop the exports of the country. Each council is responsible for the promotion of a particular group of products, projects and services. The main role of the EPCs is to project India's image abroad as a reliable supplier of high quality goods and services. In particular, the EPCs shall encourage and monitor the observance of international standards and specifications by exporters. The EPCs shall keep abreast of the trends and opportunities in international markets for goods and services and assist their members in taking advantage of such opportunities in order to expand and diversify exports.